which who would you really love to see break out this season? Who do you think could be those? Because there's obviously going to be a lot of opportunities for young guys to get uh, to get their shot. Right off the top, it has to be one of these quarterbacks. Uh, I think that that goes almost without saying. Whether it's going to be Jerry Garantano, who is is the expected starter, but you have a, a grad transfer and Keller Chris coming in as a kid from Stanford, transferred from Stanford to Tennessee for one year of eligibility, and hopefully he's at at worst going to push Garantano. Um, one of those guys, whoever plays, really, I think it's going to be Garantano. Um, as of right now, I need to see Keller Chris play. He's not yet at Tennessee, so I'm not totally sure exactly what his skill set looks like. But um, it, one of those guys, I mean, that could change the entire the entirety of this team and and how they perform this season. Just having your your uh, I guess the the CEO of the offense of sorts uh, really step up. But past that, I mean, as I said earlier, that offensive line is just in really rough shape and. What I would love to see is one of the offensive linemen that is not Trey Smith. If you don't know who Trey Smith is, he's gun, going to be a sophomore, but he was an all-SEC player as a true freshman last year, was one of the top players in America when he came in, uh, I guess, uh, over a year ago. And um, I mean, he's just this phenomenal talent, just absolutely a, a guy who – is kind of not not once in a generation, but once in a in a decade sort of a offensive lineman, just really really good, can carry the unit on his back, and someone supplemental to him stepping up would be huge because you've had some guys like a Chance Hall who's a veteran, but he's been injured, but hopefully he'll be back ideally, and maybe someone like that stepping up would just be huge. Now that's just on the offensive side of the ball. There's plenty of people on on defense. You need a guy like Shy Tuttle on the defensive line. Uh, to break out, that would be giant. And 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 just someone on that defensive line step up as a real leader. Nigel Warrior, who's already looked really good. He's defensive back, uh, a safety, who's looked awesome. I mean, his, he has talent for days. Um, but he has to really come into his own, become a team leader, really uh, embrace his role as to who he is because – Ultimately, he's he's going to be a sophomore, but he's going to be someone that guys just look to um, because he's kind of been there, done that, played as a freshman, and has looked awesome. So that's that would be, I guess that's that's really at the few different levels of the team there where I think uh, I would like to see breakout stars, but of course you, I genuinely I'm, I'm just not not sure exactly where that production is going to come from quite yet. You may know a little bit more uh, this time on Saturday. Take it about a 48 hours uh, forward, and uh, maybe you'll have uh, some different opinions, and uh, we'll be able to get back together and uh, get your recap on the orange and white game. Charlie Burris, orange and white report. See, it goes, there's synergy right there. It's, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's, I'm really looking forward to this orange and white game. It's interesting. They're They're doing something different with it. This is one of the... Easily probably the biggest change that I would say Jeremy Pro brought to the entire spring practice process was the way that he's doing the spring game. Typically, as long as I've ever been in touch with Tennessee football, which is essentially my entire life, um, they've had the spring game and it comes with an autograph session before and you get to meet the players and it's this fan, it's called fan day and fans get to come and do all these things. They've actually nixed that this year. Um, that's not happening, but they're going to make it basically like a game day. They're having the vol walk, which happens every single game day during the fall, um, where the team walks into Neyland Stadium through all the fans, and and then they're playing the game like an actual game. Butch Jones did it like a practice. He would have circle of life and do all this kind of nonsense, throwing drills and different things with the quarterbacks. And I think Jeremy Pruitt's cutting all that out and just making it like a game. It's just going to be straightforward. You score seven points when you score a touchdown. And uh, orange versus white. And and it's going to be really interesting to see because that it is a complete flip from Butch. I mean, Butch he had this weird scoring system that made no sense. No one still really knows what it means or what it was. Um, and and that's that's going to be a real change and something to really look out for if if you're just looking for for spring games to watch. I think Tennessee, even compared to most other teams in the SEC, is kind of doing a, a different thing in that way, trying to make it like an actual game. I think Pruitt just wants to see where his team is at in terms of game day focus. Um, so be looking out for that. And yeah, I'd be more than happy to, to come back and kind of discuss what we see.
Charlie, I've got to think that after what was it, uh, five years, four seasons of Butch Jones? Uh, five seasons. Yeah. Five seasons of Butch Jones that uh, anyone misconstrued to have said anything close to circle of life, those three words in that order on campus, there would be something maybe terribly done to them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's really become almost a crime just with with anything that Butch Jones used to say, like it's it's become taboo to say the word individual because Butch, oh, that was his favorite word. It was individual. This this individual did this and such. And uh it's it all it makes me cringe just hearing someone say that now. Um, but yeah, it's, Jeremy Pruitt is bringing that, that kind of breath of fresh air, changing that God bless him. Uh, it's much more enjoyable to go to a press conference now, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm honestly really excited about the future of, uh, of the squad and excited to see where they go. All right, Charlie, we hope the, uh, process of the exorcism continues <laughs> on Saturday at Neyland stadium. Uh, Charlie, we appreciate you stopping by and always uh, enjoy the conversation on Tennessee football. And yeah, we'd love to have you back to uh, discuss what you saw on Saturday. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Mark.